What if you could invest in a technology that could save the planet? A technology that creates clean air and clean water, and provides food and fuel for some of the poorest and most vulnerable people on the planet. A technology that just may be the world's best and last chance to safely manage climate change. Would you invest? Yes. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> The good news is we have the technology. It's actually quite ancient, easy to operate, and you probably see it every single day. The trouble is, we're losing trees at an alarming rate. In the time it takes to finish this talk, we'll lose another 900 acres, roughly the size of Central Park. Over the course of a year, we'll lose 70 million, roughly the size of Greece. This map from the Global Forest Watch shows tree cover loss just from the year 2000 until 2016. It's clear the world's forests need a new business plan. They actually need a good investment banker. <laughs> <laughs> When we lose forests, we lose a valuable tool in the fight against climate change. We not only lose the plants and animals that call it home. Deforestation is a one-two punch to the environment. The first is the release of all the carbon that's stored in the trees and the soil, and the second is that we forever lose that forest's ability to continue capturing carbon pollution. Deforestation represents 15 to 20 percent of climate change. To put that into context, if all of the world's forests were a country, it would be the third largest emitter, right behind China and the U.S. So what can we do to address deforestation? Well, we can change the economic incentives on the ground. One easy way to do this is we can pay forest communities if they reduce their deforestation rate. But if you ask an economist the value of a forest, they'll likely tell you to look at the price of timber, or agriculture, or real estate. But there's maybe some good news. Over the last 10 years, the United Nations has been developing a new framework called Red Plus, a reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. Red Plus lays out the political and technical framework to address forest loss. Yet one key issue remains unresolved: Where will the money come from? How will countries afford to take the actions they'll need to take in order to reduce deforestation? Everyone benefits from forests, but who will pay? Well, your next flight might hold the answer. Starting in 2020, the international aviation sector will have a carbon target for the first time. This means that airlines may have to purchase carbon credits in order to comply with this new regulation. If we can get credits. From reducing deforestation, included in this new market, we can unleash a powerful new source of investment to support forest con conservation. So the next time you board a flight, in addition to getting air miles, you might also be saving a forest. But beyond just the airline industry, places around the world are implementing a carbon price, from California to Europe, Korea to Mexico, even China. Soon, 40 percent of global economic production will come from places that have a carbon price. So, don't let anybody tell you you can't pursue both economic growth and environmental protection. As an impact investor and environmentalist, I design new financial strategies and investment products to address some of the world's most urgent environmental issues. We're currently working on a new fund that will combine public, private. And philanthropic money to pay forest communities if they can verifiably reduce their deforestation rate. We can take these reductions, turn them into carbon credits, and then sell them to companies like airlines that might need them. In this way, we can generate a return for our investors. In fact, in the future, your own retirement account could be growing, as it also is protecting a forest. What might this look like on the ground? These investments. Could support 
new businesses that use the forest sustainably. For example, sustainable nut and timber production in a place like Brazil. Or they could be used to pay farmers to keep part of their land as forest, like is currently happening right now in Costa Rica. Because once we lose a forest, we typically lose it forever. We will need hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, of new investment to do this. We need to shift the way our institutions think about and value nature. But it can be done. Imagine if a tree had been invented in a lab at MIT or by a Silicon Valley startup. How wealthy would the creators be? <laughs> Now imagine if we could IPO all of the world's forests and use the proceeds to protect them. The need is urgent. The potential for impact is enormous. The time is now. We can't wait. Our children can't wait. I encourage you to think about forests as a powerful and safe technology that just might save our planet. After all, money may just grow on trees. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>